Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen Mitchell, also known as Natural Brain. If you are new here, I need you to do two things. The first is subscribe down below. The second is click the notification bell so you don't miss my new uploads. So today, this video is sponsored by Brillo Pad because that's what my hair freaking feels like, y'all. It may look fluffy, but it's just dry. But today I'm gonna be doing this idea that I've had for the longest time and never tried, but it's basically reverse deep conditioning. Why am I trying reverse deep conditioning? Basically, because my hair is really dry and I promise you, the first thing that I want to put on it is not a shampoo. It's uh, it's doing this thing where, oh gosh, oh, see, this is why I need moisture before the shampoo. On top of trying the whole reverse deep conditioning idea, I am going to be answering some of you guys' most asked questions. I actually picked up a new deep conditioner at Target. It's called the Pumpkin Mint Deep Treatment by Curls Dynasty. I've never tried it, but comment down below if you tried it. Let me know what you guys thought of it, but I'm gonna be trying it today. It smells a lot like mint. I find that like whatever product has mint in it, that's the overpowering smell. It's gonna smell like that. So my whole idea with this reverse deep conditioning is basically I'm gonna use the deep treatment like a pre-poo. So I'm gonna wet my hair add the deep conditioner and just use it to help detangle my hair before I shampoo so that my hair doesn't break off and die. So the first question I have is, do you ever feel pressure by society to straighten your hair and has wearing your natural hair affected the way people treat you? Um, I would say I don't really get caught up in the opinions of others. The only thing that really matters to me is if I'm happy. And so seeing my hair flourish, seeing it grow longer, oh my gosh, is that a knot in my hair? Don't do this. Do not wait to detangle your hair. Um, But see, where was I even at? Oh my gosh. I don't really feel pressured by society. I just want to be happy with myself. So I've noticed that my hair has grown a lot. It's longer than it's ever been before it's color treated it's still healthy so all in all i'm happy with what i'm doing so it doesn't really matter to me how other people feel about it people could hate everybody could hate my natural hair but as long as i love it i'm gonna be pretty satisfied as far as wearing my natural hair and it affecting the way people treat me i haven't personally witnessed that but i guess it's not something i would really notice because i always wear my natural hair if i wore my hair straight half the time and then curly the other half of the time then i would say oh you know when my hair straight people treat me like this when it's curly they treat me like this but i don't really notice the difference because people treat me the way they treat me because my hair is natural all the time so no i haven't really noticed the difference so right now i'm gonna take some water and spray it because when i tell you y'all it's tangled and dry So the next question is how many siblings do you have? I only have one sibling. His name is Cody or his name is Codis, okay? But I call him Cody because that's my nickname for him and he is older. He is 29. He's about to be 30, the big 3-0. Oh, um but he is my only sibling. So the next question is when I travel, do I like to do adventurous slash dangerous things? And the answer is, so far, no. When I travel, I really just like to explore and relax. Those are my two main things. Like, I want to see some things that take my breath away, some things that I've never seen before. But I don't typically do dangerous things, but I'm kind of up for it. Like, I think I would try, what's some adventurous things I'm up for? Um, I think I would try bungee jumping, maybe. But I don't really know. It just has to take me like if it's offered i've done um when i went to cuba with kim we did zip lining and that was my first time ever zip lining so if that counts as like adventurous then sign me up but when it comes to like really really dangerous i want to live a long happy life so that i can see more of the world so i don't know how dangerous i'll be getting but i do like to travel i do like to explore i do like to see different things so the next person asks why don't i wear makeup y'all i get this question so much and the answer is so simple i just don't that's it there's no rhyme or reason i guess one reason is that i'm too lazy the second reason is that i like 
the way I look I don't like to wear makeup I guess it can all be summed up by if you are someone who does wear makeup why do you wear makeup it's probably similar to the reason why I don't wear makeup you just you do it because you want to and I don't do it because I don't want to but I don't have anything against it in fact I used to work at Ulta if you're an OG subscriber then you might know that the next question is do I do anything outside of YouTube for work and the answer is happily no YouTube slash social media is my full-time job so this is the job trust me I would not be able to produce three videos a week if it wasn't my full-time job because this is time consuming but I don't mind it's what I love to do and if given the option like I have the option right now I would choose doing social media full-time over a regular nine to five because this is actually something I really enjoy so the next question is how do I stay in shape and y'all genetics don't hurt me for saying that but that's really it genetics I don't work out and I know like, yeah, I just, mm, yeah, I just don't work out y'all. So I don't do anything to stay in shape right now. God has blessed me um, so that I still look good, even though I don't work out. Um, I don't, I have to find ways to make things fun because that's the only way I'm going to do them. So I don't know if you guys know but I used to do gymnastics and I'm thinking about signing up for adult tumbling classes that way I can get my exercise in and just feel like a big kid and have a good time I really feel like that's the only way I'm gonna be consistent is if I make it something that I can't wait to do like make it one of my hobbies because just getting up and saying I'm just gonna work out for the health of it doesn't do it for me okay see this this is the type of stuff I'm not a huge fan of oh oh the knots Ooh. so far i'm liking this deep conditioner because it's making my hair really soft it has good slip so i'm able to detangle my hair really well which is definitely what i needed before washing it so the next question is how are you so confident with your eyebrows all love no hate i love you by the way love you too and yo before I answer this, I get asked this question all of the time. It's some variation of the question. Why don't you do your eyebrows? Um, and some people, it's just like not even helpful advice. It's just like, girl, you should use black castor oil on your eyebrows, assuming that I care. <laughs> assuming that I care because they care so I'm honestly that's one of the things that confuses me the most is how people are so bothered by how genuinely unbothered I am I don't think people are used to people being happy without following the status quo I think it has become taboo to like the way you are just the way you are and not conforming to societal standards that say your eyebrows got to be on fleek i just don't really care because i still feel beautiful like it doesn't bother me and it's never stopped me um from getting a job it's never stopped me from dating who i want to date it's never stopped me from any of those things what i've noticed the most is that um Females are the ones who care about it so much like that's a female thing because never have I ever had a guy ask me Are you gonna get your eyebrows done? I don't like your eyebrows like that. Never. It's a female thing. It's a societal Female pressure that I just don't subscribe to uh, but if you want me to come a little closer In case you couldn't see because my eyebrows are really thin they point up in two different directions so even if you wanted to just go like that because i know you kind of do even if you want to go like that it will not go like that these are genetic eyebrows i get these eyebrows from my daddy and i think one of my cousins have these has these eyebrows as well so it's just genetics um if i wanted to like some people more people have these eyebrows than you think but they get them done because um they like to wear makeup or whatever maybe they don't like their eyebrows i really don't know but i really just don't care so answering the question about how i'm so confident with my eyebrows um it's pretty much just how i'm confident with other aspects of my life if you're happy with something 
why would you put so much weight into what other people think when it's not stopping you from doing anything or becoming anything that you want to become i just don't first i don't see it as a problem that needs fixing and i'm also pretty unbothered by what other people think the next question is how old are you and do you regret leaving college i am 22 years old I would have graduated from college in May 2019 and no, I don't regret leaving college because the reasons why I left college are still valid today. It's kind of tough to explain but I'm really going to try. I just don't believe in the system. I guess that's the best way to try to explain it, I don't believe in the system. I was going to school for business management, but I had already um, successfully started off my YouTube channel. I was already making money with YouTube, but I was still going to school. And I was going to school in hopes of learning some transferable skills for my career, um, for doing social media full time, because I had already realized that's what I wanted to do. Um, and really school was just getting in the way of my bigger plan and I realized that I was looking at people who weren't doing what I wanted to do to teach me how to do what I wanted to do and I just felt like it was backwards on top of the fact that um, I was taking out loans for my school education and I just couldn't do it. I could not convince myself to take out not one more um, loan. I just couldn't because at this point i'm already in enough debt and um i just wasn't with that so yes i did if you didn't know the whole story i left college with one year left i would have finished in one year and had i not had a minor my minor was spanish had i not had a minor i would have already graduated in three years so some people say why did you um quit when you only had a year left but ain't nobody offered to pay these student loans so everybody needs to just have several seats you know what i'm saying but i have considered going back to school not because i feel like i made a mistake i would still make this decision today but i've considered going back to school when i can pay for it myself and i don't have to take out any student loans just so i can finish and go ahead and get the degree that i've worked three years for and have several thousand dollars worth of debt for you know what I'm saying? So yeah, no regrets over here. I'm happy I get to travel. These are all the things that when I left school, I wanted to do. I wanted to make good money. I wanted to be able to travel more. I wanted to be on my own schedule and not someone else's schedule. Um, and I think I've accomplished those things and I'm still accomplishing those things. So all in all, I'll do it again. Okay, curls, I see you trying to make a debut, make an appearance or whatever, like. <laughs> Ladies, it's pimps too. Girl, I'm brush your shoulders off. What, what, see, it's sticking together. It don't want to make a part. It's wilding out. It's showing out. It's acting a fool. Okay, the next question is, what is the hardest thing slash thing that I dread the most about doing my hair? And I would have to say... The thing that I dread the most, I wouldn't say the hardest, but the thing that I dread the most is trimming my hair because I see all of these inches and you mean to tell me I don't get to keep it? That sounds ghetto. What do you mean? I grew you myself and you mean to tell me that if I don't cut it off, then it's just going to split up my hair and I'm about to cut off even more hair? Like, what type of punishment? No. The next question is, are there days where you think about chopping it all off because of the maintenance your hair requires? My hair is super long and I don't want to cut it, but sometimes I have the urges. I'm going to be honest with you, no. That never crossed my mind because I know as soon as I do it, I would immediately regret it. And I'm just not into that whole um, do it because you are feeling it in the moment. Logically, if I cut my hair, I would really have to sit down and be like, this is the next move that I want to make. Um, I do think I will eventually get to a length where I don't 
want to grow my hair out anymore like it'll be the length that I continue to cut my hair to but I'm not there yet I'm still growing it out but I won't be doing a big chop or just cutting it off if that does happen please call somebody because I'm not okay if I just come out of nowhere and be like big chop something is wrong either my hair got damaged somehow or like I did it for health reasons but it ain't because I just woke up one day and said you know what I gotta cut it off that means something is wrong if you weren't doing YouTube what would your dream job be and I can't really answer that completely because I don't know what the job title would be but I do feel like it would be something creative something where I'm allowed to move as I please and I don't have to something that I feel freedom in like it's something that I love to do it's backed by passion and it allows me to be creative so I guess if I wasn't doing this I might want to get into songwriting because y'all I sing all day I would want to get into songwriting or maybe um acting things like that something that still allow me to have a creative outlet as my full job and that allow me to have the freedom to travel more and stuff like that those are important to me so I think my job should reflect my core values I think that's why a lot of people aren't happy because their job doesn't reflect what they love to do so I feel like as long as my job reflects the things that I like, I'm gonna be pretty happy. This person asked a ton of questions. So the first question is, are you a believer in Christ? Yes, I am. Do you attend church? I used to attend church a lot as a kid. We would go every Sunday, but we kind of got out of doing that. And to be honest, as I grew up, I realized that I didn't value the place as much as having a personal relationship with God. I feel that there are people that go to church but don't have that personal relationship. And I also think a lot of times churches can be and are not always but can be corrupt. So I really like to work more on the personal relationship that I have with God rather than getting caught up in the idea of if I attend church all the time, then I'll be okay. So that's kind of my standing on that. And what do you want to do as a career? I would like to get into acting later down the road. I would like to open up um, several different businesses. Don't know in what category, but I want to continue to work for myself, whatever it is that I do. So the next question is, how do I stay motivated? Now, this is something that, believe it or not, I struggle with because I'm either motivated all the way, like I want to push out that content, or I just don't have any motivation and it's because of burnout I I work myself really hard nobody pushes me to work as hard as I do I just am that person nobody is gonna work for your brand like you work for your brand um so yeah that's the thing I need to work on finding a happy medium where I don't feel like if I'm not producing content, I'm not being productive and where I feel that creativity is at, if that makes sense. Like I don't want to burn myself out so much because I go through burnout, honestly, at least once a month. And that's why I quote unquote disappear. When I say disappear, I mean disappear for me because I don't always put out three videos a week. If I'm going through burnout, you might see one video that week or something like that because I just need a break. One, from styling my hair so much and two, from always having to be on my game. Like always thinking of new ideas to do with my natural hair. That's actually something I wanna get out of. I wanna do more than just natural hair. Of course, I'm gonna continue my natural hair content, but I just wanna vary it up more because it is not natural for someone to do their hair as much as I do my hair. And I'm really interested in letting you guys see more than just hair because I am more than just hair, believe it or not. The next question is, what is your ethnicity? I get this question a lot and I think it's because of the video that I did speaking Spanglish. I think that confused a lot of people because um, they weren't aware that I speak Spanish and stuff like that. So I am 75% African American and 25% Mexican. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's all there is to it. And I learned Spanish um, a little bit in school, a little bit at home. Like I learned how to understand Spanish more at home or just, you know, around family that speaks Spanish. And then I learned 
more about the speaking in school and then I also like worked extra hard to teach myself outside of that um, fun fact believe it or not I really don't speak Spanish around my family because I get really nervous because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to things that I really care about so I barely speak it around them because I feel like I'm gonna mess up um, whereas when it comes to other people especially people who don't speak Spanish I really don't care much um, because they're not going to correct me anyway and then when it comes to speaking to people who aren't my family who speak Spanish um, it doesn't really matter you know like as long as you're understood because I have conversational Spanish so as long as you're understood which is the whole point um, nobody really cares so and I'm not saying that my family would be tough on me I'm just tough on myself so it's way easier for me to speak Spanish to a stranger who is probably like wow this black girl went out of her way to learn Spanish they're more amazed than anything um than it is or like out of necessity I will speak Spanish out of necessity for sure because you get to things quicker if other people um if you can speak the language but it's around family because everyone speaks it I just allow everyone else to speak it for me unless you know I'm asked a direct question or something like that and yeah I think also there's like a stigma in my family that I don't like Spanish because I was the last one to learn Spanish but I'm also the youngest mind you that um, so all in all I know I really got off topic basically now you know my ethnicity breakdown and you know a little bit about the Spanish too boom the next question is what are your favorite foods to eat dinner meal snacks so my favorite foods to eat are definitely crab legs and lobster tail and tacos so my favorite tacos are tacos de barbacoa then after that I would say tacos de carnitas and then after that I would say um maybe shrimp or steak tacos would be next but I love tacos and my favorite snack people think it's weird but I love tomatoes y'all like I have an unhealthy slash healthy relationship an obsession with tomatoes I will eat them as a snack I will get cherry tomatoes cut them in half and then put lemon on them and um what is it garlic powder and salt and I will eat it as a snack same thing with cucumbers I'll do the same thing like I I love them and my roommates used to make fun of me they'd be like there you go eat them nasty tomatoes again because they both didn't like tomatoes and I'm like mind your business mind the food that feeds you but they would talk mad crap so the next question is what does my tattoo say and do I have more than just the one on my collarbone this one right here so my tattoo says fuerza it means strength and power in Spanish and I just I like my tattoos to mean something and when I say tattoos I mean tattoo because this is the only one this is the only one I have um and they say you know once you get one tattoo you can't stop but let me just go on record I did stop and I'll be stopping until I find something else that I think means a lot and can stand the test of time like years from now I'll still be like I really like this tattoo because they are permanent the next question is how do I deal with fake friends? And this is gonna be a real easy question. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't like fakeness around me and I'm definitely one of those people. I'd rather be alone than to be surrounded by people that make me feel like I'm alone. Like if you're my friend and I can't rely on you, then you're not really my friend. So if you're my friend, I'll do anything for you. I've been over backwards, whatever. Um, but I can't extend that to everybody because everybody doesn't love like I do. That's just how it is. So I don't know. I just, I need to feel that if I would bend over backwards for you, that you would do the same for me. So if I notice that you're fake, and I'm very intuitive, if I notice that you're fake, I will leave you where I found you. I think one person has slipped the radar for me just one and when I realized that she was not a real friend I let her go that was just that on that I let her go and when I care I really do care I'll give you more chances than most people but once I'm done you can never reopen the door because it's shut it's shut it's locked it's sealed 
all that. So I just don't deal with fake people. Don't be fake. So I have another loaded question and it says, what do you think of the dating scene of our generation? As in, do you find it challenging to date seriously or are you down with the city girls, city boys lifestyle and couldn't care less? By the way, love your channel. Thank you, thank you. Um, So what do I think of the dating scene? Uh, I think I'm a tad bit old school. So I think it makes it a little harder for me to find somebody because this new generation, and it's so crazy because technically I'm a part of it, but this new generation is on some other stuff and I just can't relate. You ever feel like you were just not born at the right time? Because I just, I refuse to settle. When you are confident in what you bring to the table, you refuse to settle for less. And I feel like a lot of females especially um, are settling because they just don't want to be alone and so men get so used to that they're like this other girl is willing to do this why aren't you well I could have told you that I'm not like them other girls I don't know I'm not too happy with the overall dating pool because I just don't feel like um a lot of the men are quality at this point they could be quality but they don't want to be and females on average are not demanding it so they won't rise to the occasion they won't rise to the bar you never set so i set a high bar and it's known but i also bring a lot to the table and honestly i think that's why i'm still single just because when it comes to settling i just don't feel like i should have to i feel like the guy who ends up with me he's not settling he's winning and i want to win too so to answer the next question i do take dating kind of seriously Kinda doesn't make it seem like it's serious at all. But I don't have the city boy, city girls mentality. I'm more of the hot girl summer mentality, which is I'm gonna be straight regardless. Whatever you bring to the table, you are adding to the table and I don't need it. I'm gonna eat regardless, okay? Whether you're here or not, you're here because I want you here, not because I need you here. City girls is I'm gonna rob you and um, I'm gonna take all your money and it ain't nothing you can do about it city girls that's not me i got my own money i can do for myself and whatever the guy brings is just extra i'm not looking for a man to pay all my bills i can do that i'm looking for like basically and i don't even want to say my other half because i believe that people are created whole you're just you know you take one and one and it equals two you don't take a half a half and make a whole i don't need you i will be fine without you but i prefer to have you because guess what two is better than one two is more than one y'all my lips was super chapped and y'all fake for not telling me the next question is how do you stay confident and focused on your goals um so i just see everything as this is where i am this is where i want to be in setting the steps to get to my ultimate goal so i align myself with my goal a lot of people they want something or they say they want something they're here and they take all these side steps and front four steps, but never up to their goal. Um, so a good example of that is some people, they say they want to save money, but they want to go out every weekend. So um, you got to be disciplined, you know, to reach your goals. Like it doesn't always have to be monetary goals, but you have to be disciplined. You have to say, um, this is where I want to be and this is how I'm going to get there and then you actually have to follow those steps. A lot of people know what they have to do to get to where they want to be but they are not taking the steps to get there and then they want to complain about not being where they want to be in life. That's another thing. You have to be willing to sacrifice. You can't have it all. You can't take 12 vacations a year and save $100,000. It's just not a thing. Or maybe you can but I can't right now but eventually I will be able to do that but you know you can't have it all but you can get to your goal sometimes you just have to sacrifice some people most people are not willing to sacrifice so they don't reach their goals in a good amount of time or they don't ever reach their goals so the next question is where are my favorite places that i've traveled to and i would definitely have to say the dominican republic because that vacation is such a good time my parents actually have a timeshare so whenever we go and we've gone you know for consecutive years and stuff like that whenever we go it's always a good time we know we're gonna have a great time we know what to expect service is great food is great everything do you have travel goals for the remainder of the year um i am actually going to jamaica in december so before the year ends i will have gone to jamaica i've been to jamaica but i was way younger 
Um, I think, I don't know, was I like five or six or seven or eight or nine? Something like that. I was a kid. But now I'm going as an adult and it's all inclusive. So you already know what's going on. All the food, all the lick, everything. So the next question is, how tall am I? I am a whopping 5'1". I know that's so freaking crazy. Some people tell me, like when they meet me in person, that they thought I would be taller. Um, but I'm not, I'm a little shorty. I am just going to put this plastic cap on in deep condition like normal. So I'll probably leave it on for like 45 minutes and then I'm gonna rinse it out. And then it says, are you single or in a relationship? I am single. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm single, I'm not in a relationship because honestly, as a whole, men have been pretty disappointing. All right, y'all, so I am back. And I think this is a good idea if you have high porosity hair. I'm not really sure how it will work on low porosity hair, but my hair feels really, really moisturized. Um, and I think that's just because it was so dry and it was so in need of moisture that it soaked up that deep conditioner. It soaked it right on up. So next I'm just gonna go in with this Afro Love shampoo and use it to shampoo after the deep condition, the switch up. now I'm going to go ahead and shampoo this out and come back and share with you what I think about doing this all backwards. All right, y'all. So I just rinsed out the shampoo. Y'all, so my hair feels good. It still feels really soft. Um, if you don't want your hair to be so dry or if your hair gets dry really easily, I recommend just shampooing your scalp and then rinsing it out and letting it fall through the rest of your hair. But I went ahead and shampooed the whole thing. But y'all, this is definitely something, I wouldn't do it all the time, but I would do it if my hair is really tangled and I feel like I have a risk of damaging my hair by shampooing first. So I would definitely do this again. And if you wanted to, you could deep condition after again. I hope you guys enjoy getting to know more about me because I be struggling to open up. I'm like a closed vault, y'all. I'm like a closed vault. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.